Look up the word crazy in the dictionary and you might just find an asterisk beside the definition that says, listen to this ubiquitous podcast featuring Sue Duffield and you'll find out what crazy means. Sue's travelogue journey of unfiltered stories, impossible miracles, and faith-filled fun will be revisited right here. So buckle up and let's get going with this humorous travelogue of an unfiltered saint, Sue Biquitous. You know, if you lived in this century, and you do, if you ever had an opportunity to go back and watch the award-winning television show Friends, uh, I mean, it's just incredible. My favorite actress in that whole series is Lisa Kudrow. She was Phoebe Buffay. And the reason I like her, she's such a great comedian. Hilarious. But do you remember that one episode where she sang the song, Smelly Cat, Smelly Cat, what are they feeding you? Oh, it just, it wrecks me. Get on YouTube and just look up Smelly Cat with Phoebe Buffay from the Friends television show it's great it really is great so today's episode podcast is a little bit of a kind of like a takeoff on that instead of smelly cat we're going to talk about smelly chat smelly chat my mother was the queen olfactory president of the world i mean she could smell dead mice miles away she could (laughs) do anything in her power there was something specifically miraculous about her nose and her sense of smell. So we're going to talk about a smelly chat, Naoma Beatty, and we're also going to talk a little bit about what we can do as Christians on how to impact the world. So Jeff Duffield, speaking of <laughs> smelly chat, I didn't mean to say it like that, but I wanted <laughs> one of my favorite things that you said your mother used to tell you when you needed a bath was you were smelling, what was the word she used? Oh, she referred that to many things, just not when I needed oh, okay. a bath, but yeah. This room smells were were probably her favorite to that. But she would say that and clothes, clothes that were dirty and needed to be washed. Yes. That they smelled close. They smelled close. Yep. That, my friend, has to be. I don't know be, what that means. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know anybody in the South. Uh, I don't know anybody anywhere that would know. It just seems like a South Jersey term to it me. It could be, but that's what she would refer to it as close. But, 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 so she'd actually come over and say, let me smell you, and say, you smell a little close? No. I can say it wasn't so much body odors. It okay. was the room odors. Yeah. You know, the room smelled close. Isn't that something? I, you know, I, know. I don't get I it. I never, I just took it as face value because she said it from the time I was very young, and it was just, you know, I didn't argue with her. <laughs> So I just, but uh, my grandmother said the same exact thing. Well, there you go. It it was just weird. It was a it was a term used early in the at least in our early lives that I remember where oh it smells so close. In well, here. I heard this weekend someone who was uh, in our age group it has nothing to do with smells. Okay. But he said it this weekend. He used the term hassock. Oh, he did. Yeah, I heard that. And he said, "I don't, I don't, of, I don't know what you call it." Said to the the group there, but he says that my mother, her, his mother, who would be in my mother's age bracket, yeah, said hassock. And I yelled out. I don't know if he heard me or not. I yelled out Ottoman. That's but that's, that's the contemporary right, term, right. if you will. Maybe it was back then. Yeah, we always called it a hassock. H a s s o c k. But it's also an ottoman. The bottom line is it's a footstool when you're sitting on your couch yeah, or your chair. Of course it is. And yeah. sometimes, it, like ours does, we have a rather <laughs> large hassock ottoman. Right. And it has wheels on it, but not always. Anyway. Well, did you know something? I guess I know a couple things. Did you know, according to Everyday Health website, Mm-hmm. that women have a better sense of smell than men do. Oh, I don't doubt for it for a minute. Isn't that something? I mean, I it, it kind of goes with the territory here. You, because you come into our abode mm-hmm. after we've been gone for a while. And it smells close. <laughs> <laughs> or if we forgot to take the trash out before then we left. Then it smells real close. Oh, my word. Yeah. One time we forgot... Yeah. We were gone a couple of days. And the house and, was closed. Oh, up. Yeah. my word. It was like, what yeah. did we do? It was not nice. Oh, it was not nice. But you, uh, you, you'll you notice there's, uh, where, oh, your um, 
your current vocal studio at the Worldwide Production the Center. The Worldwide Jeff Produc- Productions. Production Studio. Uh, you walked in there the other day and said you, it I don't smelled know what like, you said. Well, it, it smelled, smelled like, like you a, were not happy. a used clothing store. <laughs> Well, there is some used clothing in that room. Uh, I, I mean, it just didn't smell fresh. It smelled very close. Well. <laughs> and in fact, I'm, I'm really up against them right now, very close to me. <laughs> and to this day, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. It didn't affect me. No. Well, you know what I did, though? I know I, what you I did. I am thrilled that there is a outlet. In... How many How many folks have a closed closet? Now, granted, it's a walk-in clothes. closet. Clothes. Clothes. What I say? Well, you said clothes. Uh, whatever. Okay. Because we're, we're going to get it we're mixed gonna up go between. Down, we're going to go down that road, huh? Okay. Close, a close clothes. I did not say closet. close. Say I that said fast. Clothes. <laughs> Anyhow, we have a walk-in closet yes. that you happen to be in presently. That's correct. As you're broadcasting. That's right. And it's one of the first. Well, I mean, it may be common with other people. But it's one of the first clothes closet <laughs> that i have been in or used yeah. that has an electric outlet. yes it's it's lovely so i can plug in my little you plug in you know, your little charger diffuser thing or diff- whatever your little smell me yeah. things but yeah. here's the reason women yes. women are better at odor and smell identification because yes. there's a there's study that found out that one of the reasons is women have a more developed orbital prefrontal region of the brain now i was very careful with that because I didn't want to, I wanted to make sure of the brain. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so. Well, whatever it is, whatever there's it no is, doubt. We you, have that. You smell things that I go like, huh? Yeah. You know, I I, I, I just don't take notice of them. Well, then, in, and then history says, are you ready for this? This I'm is good. Ready. Using your orbital prefrontal region of your brain. And I'm impressed that you say that so well. Well, I had to practice that one. Mm-hmm. It also is evolved from Mm. an ability to discern i I love that term Mm. the ability to discern Mm -hmm. the best possible mates Hmm. or to help women better bond with and understand their newborns that would make sense well yeah i mean when so what you're saying (laughs) is is we have greater smelly chat well, Smelly jam. Yeah. Well, well, no, what you're really saying is, is back in the day, in mm-hmm. our high school days, mm-hmm. all things considered, I must not have smelled very close. No. Well, Otherwise, you would have rejected me or, as or, a potential mate. Or I was hoping that you wouldn't smell close so that we could get close. <laughs> and obviously... <laughs> At some point, we did. Yeah. Yeah, but there was a there was a ceremony that took place before. I know that. there was. And where are we going? Well, with we're that? not done yet. Oh, and, I can. And, oh, no, boy. We're, we're just starting, man. I was thinking we were going to make an escape there. No, th- do not escape because mm. you're going to be with me on a good portion of this. Mm. And I know you're thrilled because you're very close. Mm. Well, I'm <laughs> not as close as people might think I am <laughs> as far as physical proximity. Well, no, it all depends on what but the I, definition is. I, there, I, I had you I, worked very hard hard all week at our conference well, so you've I been did, very but close I, I got a shower this morning <laughs> i have not perspired today no, that's true uh, all right. i had clean clothes on my suit i had on was yes, clean from yes, the cleaners yes. the shirt you had just washed yes uh i, I do put, wash your clothes yes, i do you that do. well you don't wash my suits but you wash my no clothes. Um, but they've been known to be close. Well, but not today. No. Not today. And uh, I did put uh, copious <laughs> amounts of uh, cologne I know. on this morning, as you call it, smell me. You know, there were times where you're, you're going to laugh when when uh, when you're away or something, mm-hmm. I'll go into the closet and like smell one of your suits. <laughs> Gosh. I'm, I'm serious. I mean, and it's just, it just, it's what does what, that do for you? Well, it's a discerning spirit. See, <laughs> really? Yeah, that makes me feel like you're close to me, <laughs> just like me. Well, for those they long to be, those who are close currently wondering, you. the the great uh, silent audience out there who are wondering to themselves, no. <laughs> When she's not here, I do not go in the closet and smell oh, her clothes. Oh, I am so disappointed. I thought for sure you would do that. Well, but would you, when... <laughs> uh, for know. one thing, your clothes in the closet yeah. 
don't smell like well, you. Well, I mean, if you... Because you, you had, haven't put them on. Well, no, They're but clean. I mean... Well, that's true. And there They are, smell like bounty, fresh, But like you just said, you I use. have a couple of suits as well that you don't put in the washer. Yeah. That maybe you take to the dry cleaners yeah. every third or fourth time or something. Yeah. And if you put cologne on, the cologne is still on my jacket. In theory, yeah. See? And but I'm just I, so I disappointed wouldn't know. that you wouldn't come into my worldwide headquarters <sighs> recording booth and not smell. I don't know for my clothing. It's not a priority I'm just so for me. Hurt. It's not a priority for me to to <laughs> smell your scent. <laughs> for me speaking to think of, about you. I know, but I listen, can think about you without that. I, I know you can. But this speaking is, of truth and all the speaking of scintillating <laughs> <laughs> or scintillating? No, scintillating. Oh, okay, okay. This conversation <laughs> that we have is extremely scintillating <laughs> to someone. Well, my I mother, don't know who, but my someone. mother used to say to yes. me, you know, cuz I you know, we were close as kids, <laughs> as you'd say, after being outside all day long. <laughs> and my mother would especially like on a on a Friday night or Saturday, you played outside all day long oh. and you fought with your mother, you don't want to get a bath. I don't know. And so then, you know, when you're young, my mother would yell at us, don't you dare, don't you dare leave this house before you get a bath or don't you dare leave this house there, without smelling good first. Well, you, know, you, you and I differ. I always looked forward to, after a day of youthful, juvenile, physical exertion and activities. You always, yes. I always looked forward. Well, you forward. were weird. Yeah, you, weren't, you, weren't, may, you weren't a kid that liked to get dirty. But... <laughs> I know, I know your type. Again, <laughs> I haven't made reference <laughs> lately, but again, how do you know? I just, I just, you I, weren't around. I have this sense about it. Yeah, well, you, you sense and wrong because <laughs> in the in the S C E N T S in the sense. in, in the, uh, the the period of the uh, the dark ages, as we were <laughs> oh, uh, when it was before. Uh, BSB, uh, let's see, BSB before Sue Beatty. Oh, look that at you. That 12 year period there yes. before I knew who you were. Oh. Granted, dark ages when I did nothing but just sit right. in, in the corner and stare. Um, contrary to popular opinion, I went outside, got sweaty, I and know. got dirty. But I don't, you know. I don't know what it was when you're when I was like five or six or seven or eight and played in the backyard all day you long. You were just referring to it. Well, I'm saying for me personally and my brother for that matter. I mean, we would we we could we could reek, man. You know, and there were times where if we had to but go again, out or but do something. But again, I never fought the the uh, instructions to go get cleaned up. Oh, I I, see. I, I in, right. rather look forward to being clean. Well, speaking of instructions. Yes. Okay, we're going to uh, there are 10 strange facts about our sense of smell that I I want to pass along to you. We already mentioned one, that okay. women that women can be much more odiferous oh. in their in their process. Well, no, that's, no, no, no. If they're odiferous, that means they smell. <laughs> well, they well they smell odiferous things, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Something to that effect. That's, anyway. Yeah, we'll go with that. All right. Well, yeah. mostly people can detect at least one trillion distinct scents. That's how God's created us. It's amazing. Women or men? No, everybody. One million? No, one trillion what distinct tr scents. Oh, my. I have lost that race a long no, time I think ago. No, I think you'd be, according to a researcher, uh, all right, uh, 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 in the journal kind of, of the Science Journal of Smell. I don't know what it science is. Science Journal of Smell. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but as just says here, it says that the guy, guy's name is, actually, it's a woman, Amber science Luong, journal PhD, <laughs> assistant professor at the University of Texas Health Science Center of Houston. All right, you ready for this? Yeah, she says, I can hardly wait. They there the odorant is detected by various receptors that are located on the nerve cells, and the combination of activated nerves travel to the brain. We have the capacity to smell over one trillion kinds of distinct scents. I must That's how God has created our brain. Well, I must admit to you, I find in my case, I find that hard to believe. Well, think that, about it. What to think about what? Well, just anything from oranges to cinnamon to crayons to cookies. Well, I mean, I'm uh, not. I'm not suggesting that there's not a lot. I yeah. just don't know. You just don't know one trillion things to smell. I just don't smell that many. <laughs> I just don't smell that much stuff. But here's one for you. Okay. Okay. Did Whatever. you know that our bodies can smell and i love this one and we can we can camp on this one all day but we're not oh but 
You can smell fear and disgust. According to researchers, now this isn't just biblical proportion, but to me, science proves biblical uh, mandates. You know, it does. Well, yeah. And so listen, you can smell fear and disgust, and you can smell feelings of fear and disgust through your sweat, according to these science people. And then you can experience the same emotions. Okay. Okay. According to researchers that um, men that when they've watched movies that cause extreme feeling of anger, that their sweat exudes a different kind of smell. I don't necessarily sweat when I get angry. Well, I know, but what they say you you do, you just don't know it. Oh. You don't always, you don't always know when you sweat. Your body always always gives off some sort of... You do know who you're talking (laughs) to, right? Oh, I feel so sorry for you, honey. You can walk. Just literally across the room. And I sweat in the winter. I know. And it's and it doesn't matter. I will admit, not as much as I used to. How old you are or what you weigh well, or not, how in condition you no, are. It no, does not no. matter. No, 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 no. no, no. I know. And not as much as I used to. Right. But I still, I get moving around or if it's warm enough or whatever. It doesn't take me long to work up a good right. lather, as they say. I know. Yeah. Which, is, which would make you close if you don't get a shower. Right, right. But, um... I, I I have to I have to defer to your judgment there about yeah. these researchers well, and because you know well the fear and and I'll be honest with you when I was in Malaysia I've sensed fear but I've never smelled it well I I think I smelled it okay when I was in Malaysia I and we were on the streets um, you know trying to rescue a young girl okay. out of a out of a nightclub and trafficking see I to me that 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 falls more in the category of sensing. Maybe well, and, sensing and God and smelling using, are the same. I don't know. Well, I, I don't know, but I think there was a God influenced sensing in the oh, natural no, there's realm no doubt. There's no of doubt. not only sensing in the in the spirit realm, but also sensing it in the smell. It did not smell healthy to me. It smelled like a. Oh, I don't doubt that. I, I you, think you I you told you this. Yes, you did. Yes, I, you I, did. When I landed in Korea, yes. South Korea, in Seoul, Korea, and I got off that plane and yes. went outside, I smelled. Oh, it was lovely. Yes, it was just an amazing. And, uh, you know, I don't know how to explain it. But, but that was not fear. No, no. I mean, you, haven't, you haven't finished. I haven't finished here. <laughs> when I, the difference then, I got back on the plane and then landed in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Right. And the difference between a Christian, mostly Christian or, you know, country of, right. of South Korea. Right. Versus, you know, and I'm very careful how I say this, but in a Muslim country, it's a different kind of smell. Yeah. And it's a, it, it, is, it is recognizable <laughs> for those on the way to destruction. I'm seriously, when I say well, there, that. There's, and there's different reasons there right, for right. that. But yes, I agree. Okay. So, you know, the researchers are just kind of proving the, what I have known my whole life with my mother. My yes. mother had an incredible anointing on her life about the sense of smell and it, it sounds funny it sounds weird i'm but not laughing no 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 i'm, I'm saying I'm, we, no, we don't talk be. about we talk about you know the gifts of the spirit and we talk about yeah. prophetic gifts that people have but my mother had an unusual an unusual well, your mother had a your head mother well your mother had <laughs> how can i say this <laughs> your mother had a um there were factors in your household that gave your mother, <laughs> uh, let's say, opportunity yeah. to develop that gift. I know. Well, but it was, is that a nice way was, of saying? Yeah, it was your greatly father enhanced. Used to stink? Yes, it was greatly enhanced because of my dad. There's no doubt. And, and then your she- father didn't. Let, let, let's for those of those I listening know. that knew your dad. Now, listen, I'm not saying your father right. stunk because he did not. Right. But he had. Um, Anyway, we're going to move well, on there. I know. There were certain... Yeah. Well, I have a, a lot of things to fit in the next uh, 16 minutes or so. Well, the, speaking of... And I'll just say this real quick, and then we'll move on. I'll let you go ahead with your rest of your program. But uh, one of the things that was remarkable about your father was he used to love musk cologne. Oh, and it smelled And this everywhere. may be in your notes because because I don't know No, where, I, didn't, I didn't even put this in my and, notes. And I know what you're going to say. Yeah, after his passing, mm-hmm. in the last car that he owned that he drove around, whenever that car had a leather interior, yes, and whenever that car would sit in the sun, right. and I first noticed it one day, I went to play golf, we were using the car, 
And I left the car in the parking lot in the sun and I came back to the car and got in and been closed up and I got in that thing. Yeah. And I thought for just a nanosecond that you're knowing, knowing that your father had passed away. But I, I thought for a nanosecond he was getting in the car with me because I smelled right, that, right. that odor of that musk cologne so strongly in yeah. that car. It was a, it was a moment to say the least. Well, and it's directly related to the emotion and that part of the brain for memory. Mm. Which is why it's very dangerous, as they, as I'm finding out. And I did a, several um, studies on this, just looking online in the last couple of days, where there, the decline in smell that you might have can also predict future illnesses in your body. Mm. And so each human, you know, we all have our distinct odor, like fingerprints. Yes, uh, we do. Uh, so we, we really do have a distinct odor. And, and hopefully it's pleasant. And hopefully it's pleasant. <laughs> Even if you get a shower with an unscented soap, mm. all right, and you don't do anything but an unscented uh, shampoo and you wear unscented lotion and you do, you still have a very distinct smell. And yes. here's what's so I love when I'm saying this because I, I think it's preaching right now. Every single one of us have a special DNA in the kingdom of God. We mm. are individually made. We're not, you know, it's not a hurting thing. It's right. a it's a total individual. Right. Uh, and it's the same thing. There's a word I think they use. Uh, it's called, let me see if I can find it. I did write it down. Uh, where is that word? Chromo something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I lost it. Anyway, but it's a, it's a, it's, it's really... Not as 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 distinct as we are as human beings with our fingerprint is dis- as distinct as we are in how we uh, project a smell from us. Mm-hmm. From that's why s- the dogs have a forty times, uh, you know, magnitude of smell. When you have hunting dogs that are trying to search children, they smell. They you know they the, the children that have been lost. Right. They they put well. A, they smell. They're able to smell drugs. Yeah. Certain yeah, certain breeds. Exactly. They're able to smell drugs. Uh, the uh, obviously we've all seen that. Right. In uh in videos where dogs are being used to. Uh, to sniff out, right? Uh, exactly. And and they they will take a piece of clothing for someone that's missing, right? Uh, and that's and, what I'm saying. And they get that scent, exactly. Yeah. So mm-hmm. there's the spiritual side of that mm-hmm. is that God is seeking not only just a, a you know a, a natural ability of whatever our aroma might exude from us, but He's really wanting us to be the aroma of Christ. What does Christ smell like? And so if I've been in situations, I've learned through my mom and as going back several years when she was so concerned about how we presented ourselves as kids that we didn't stink it up. I, I want to say that also to Christians today. My mother would say, don't you dare leave this house right. unless you smell good. Right. And I she do said a, that to your father a yes, few times yes. too. <laughs> it's the same thing. When we go back and we, we really look into, you know, what it what does it mean as a Christian to carry the aroma of Christ? Not only the aroma of what we are as a natural person, Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we get our answer from Second Corinthians, t- actually, yes, yeah, Second Corinthians two fifteen. It and says, "What does it say?" For we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved, and those who are perishing. Mm-hmm. And you know, let's face it: to understand what Paul was saying there, um, he said that Christians are literally we are the aroma of Christ. Right. But we also have to look at the verses surrounding that expression Mm -hmm. that says this, but thanks be to God who always leads us as captives in Christ's triumphal procession and uses us to spread the aroma of the knowledge of him everywhere. Mm -hmm. For we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are being saved, which I will say to you as my mother in her final hours as she was passing away at Salem County Nursing Home there in South Jersey. My mother did not stink. And I mean this sincerely. I would have nurses say the aroma that came out of her room, which which I believe God answered her prayer because mm-hmm. the last thing she yeah. wanted to be <laughs> would, yeah. would, would be to stink up a room. But yeah. to see this incredible miracle of God right before us. Well, speaking of uh, odors and, and smells, 
nursing homes, obviously. Yeah, they have their they have they their, have a, a certain smell, and it's and you, it's not very pleasant. You'd walk, usually, we'd walk the hallways, and as soon as you'd walk into my mother's room, yeah, and we searched, we thought, oh, surely she's got to have a stick oh, I know. up. I was, I went in there, or a glade stick up, or I something, know. and there was nothing it there. Was quite interesting. And I thought, yeah. could it be? Yeah. Could it be to the one? My mother is the aroma of Christ as we're watching her yep. transcend into her new life. Yep. But yet to some, and there was one nurse on that floor, if I recall, that was so adamant about us cleaning that room right. and getting that out of there and get this contraband of, of scent out of well, here. They, You've got they candles. Don't like, yeah, they don't, because there's some, some patients in a, in a residence like that can't tolerate No, and I understood that, but we kept yeah. telling oh, her over and over again, there's nothing uh, here. I know. But then I, I read yep. that part of verses 14 to 16, to 16 it right. says to the one we are an aroma that brings death and to the other an aroma yes. that brings life yeah. she could not recognize the fact that my mother was so thick in the presence of right. god right that there was an aroma of christ in her body right that it, it was offensive to her yeah so here's mm. my my thought today as we close today i really do believe that we need to pray to god seriously especially today for the spiritual stamina to remain a beautiful testimony of his love and to a dark and saltless world today that is so enamored with themselves and so enamored with their own feelings and so enamored that I present well. You know, seriously, we, you can even go back even further to say that God really wants us to be his perfume, you know, walking and talking and loving and leading. And I said this years ago in a journal, I, I wrote it down and I said, God's presence in my life brings a fragrance from heaven, a holy fragrance that's interlaced within a holy life. I'm not perfect. I have made serious mistakes, but I am so grateful for the presence of God in my life that has healed me from that that I don't stink up a room, that I, when I walk into a room that there's such a sense of God's presence in my life that people will know that it's God's divine work within me and not my own. Praise God for that. It can't be imitated. It can't be construed. It can't be hypothetical. And it sure doesn't make sense to the science world. You see, a holy life lived out by God's direction and guidance, it brings a fragrance to those around you and it invites them here's that word again it invites them close <laughs> but in a good way it invites them closer bringing them step by step into your inner circle and causing them to stop and breathe in deeply my thought is today Jeff and you can hang with me on this too we need to be better imitators of God mm -hmm. and whatever that means praying for God to use us and this during even this episode 48 is a smelly chat of influence <laughs> to encourage people to stay as close to the Bible and as close to his word and as close to his Holy Spirit that you can possibly be. Because as dearly loved children, live a life of love just as Christ loved you and gave himself up for you as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God, and you'll well, find that uh, in Ephesians five two. Doesn't the the one translation say that we are to live our lives as a sweet smelling savor? A sweet smelling savor. Am I quoting it absolutely correctly? correct? Yeah, thought so. And that is an attitude. That is in personality. That is in how we talk to people and how we graciously welcome them into our presence and your mother was that way and my mother your mother was very yes. sweet and she was very sweet to me she loved you more than me she, we she know did. that yes, we, that's did. another episode and, and she made chocolate <laughs> cakes with vanilla icing every that Thanksgiving you could smell as soon as you walked in Christmas. the house and she made it for me and that was jeff's cake. that chocolate cake smell and no one makes that for no, me just just throwing that me. out there no, i know just, I, just throwing that I, out there I, I'm trying to make a chocolate cake i'm not very good at it mm, so i will say to you jeff duffield i will say to you as i would say to any of my yes. women in my women's events when i would say my mother used to say don't you dare leave this house unless you're smelling good and i'm saying to you right now as well as the listening audience don't you dare take a step out of your house today wherever you are unless you're smelling good
Well, I'll go take a shower. All right. You've listened to the Supiquitous Podcast. This is episode number 48, and we have just had a journey before us. We really are looking into the future much more than we've ever before because we're watching the analytics of the downloads and the subscribers and also the countries around the world that are listening each week to this podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being such a great patron and a great supporter of this ministry. You know, I never thought of myself as a soul winner. I heard a pastor this week, basically that's his calling, to be a soul winner. But I am beginning to see over and over again that there are young people and and people my age as well that need to find Jesus more than ever before. Could it be, even through a, a what I would call a frivolous podcast, someone could find Jesus? Guess what? They are. And I'm so excited about that because we are involved not only in presenting the gospel in a preaching way, but we want to smell it up, man. We want to make sure that the fragrance of God goes out during these podcasts to reach the world. Get on SueDuffield.com and you'll find all the information on how you can keep us afloat. We love you so much. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear it. Send me an email at RadioSue at me.com and we'll get involved in a smelly chat of our own. (laughs) All right, we'll see you next week. God bless you.